Hello there, and welcome to my kitten's game tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about leaders, what a leader does for your kitten civilization, strategies on how to pick a leader, that sort of thing. Before we start, uh, some of you might not have heard of Kitten's Game before. It's kind of an obscure game, so hey, this is what it looks like. You have a village of kittens, and you can build different buildings and manage different resources and stuff like that. Part 1. How to Assign a Leader So once you research the civil service technology, we'll unlock Census. And this is a list of the kittens in your civilization and what their jobs are and some of their special powers and other stuff like that. Here on the right side, there are two buttons you can click. This star one is to make a leader. So all of a sudden, Maddie Smoke is now my leader. There's this unassigned button. Unassigned just unassigns them from their job. So all of a sudden now Maddie Smoke is unemployed and I can reassign Maddie Smoke. There's also this unassigned leader button. You might think it makes it so that you don't have a leader anymore, but no, it's just another way of unassigning the kid from their current job. You can just click the star-shaped button to make any kitten into the leader. There's no cost to assigning a leader and no downside for changing a leader. So you can do it as often as you like, or you can just pick one leader and have them be leader forever. It, it's up to you. Part 2. Why I recommend you choose a leader. Up here it says the leader is percent sign, username percent sign. But that, that's you. Uh, you are a kitten in a catnip forest. But if you assign a kitten to be the leader, they will have some special powers. And also the leader gets a bonus to how powerful they are at their job. Part 3. Leader Traits. Note that this section contains some spoilers for some late game resources, including high-tech crafting recipes. Each kitten has one of eight different traits. They are assigned it randomly, and it can't be changed. The first trait that I'll talk about, there isn't really any order for them. There's the scientist trait. If this kitten is set as your leader, then they will give you a 5% discount on the science cost of technologies and workshop upgrades. 5% discount just to the amount of science you need, not the other resources. On some color themes, you'll see a little atom icon next to the science tab when this trait is active. The scientist trait is kind of similar in name to the scholar profession. They're different, even though their names are kind of similar, so people mix them up sometimes. Manager. If this kitten is set as your leader, then they will give a bonus to the amount of goodies that you'll find when you go hunting. On some color themes, you'll see a little arrow icon next to the village tab to indicate that this trait is active. Artisan. If this kitten is set as your leader, then they will give you a 5% bonus to all crafting that you do. This is additive with other effects such as workshops and factories, so having an artisan leader is kind of like having an extra factory. In some color themes, to show that this trait is active, there will be a little hammer and pick next to the workshop tab. Merchant. If this kitten is set as your leader, then you will gain 3% more resources from trading. This is additive with trade posts, and so having a merchant leader is almost like having two additional trade posts. The symbol for this trait is a set of scales. A lot of players ask, does the merchant affect this? Does the merchant affect that? Does the merchant affect extra resource blah blah blah? A bunch of questions about that. They affect everything that normal trade posts affect, which is not titanium, not blueprints, but literally everything else. Yes, even those special resources from that one late game trade race. Merchant Leader is the way to go if you want to get more value out of your trades. Philosopher. If this kitten is set as your leader, then you will have a 10% discount on the prices of Order of the Sun upgrades. The symbol for this trait is a little sun. Chemist. This is like a specialized artisan. If this kitten is set as your leader, you will gain 7.5% more resources out of crafting, but only for certain materials. Concrete alludium, kerosene, and thorium. Interestingly, the symbol for this trait is the biohazard sign, which genuinely confuses me because the biohazard symbol is used to denote infectious diseases and dangerous stuff like that. And kerosene, alludium, concrete, and thorium are not infectious dangerous diseases, they're just chemicals. Metallurgist. This kitten is also a specialized artisan. If a metallurgist is set as your leader, then you will gain a 10% crafting bonus, but only for certain metal-themed items. Iron plates, steel, gears, and alloy. Notably, Illudium, canonically, is an advanced alloy made of metals, but it benefits from the chemist boost and not the metallurgist boost. 
and the symbol for this trait is the recycling symbol by the workshop tab. And the final trait is none. If a kitten with this trait is set as your leader, you don't get any special bonuses or anything like that. This trait doesn't have a symbol or an effect. The effects of all traits can be improved if you have burned Paragon. So all of the numbers that I mentioned earlier, 5% this, 10% that, that's if you have zero burned Paragon. But if you have more than that, more burned Paragon always makes each trait stronger. Part 4. Leader Ranks all kittens have a number of experience points that increases slowly over time. It turns out that you can build academies. They have a skills learning bonus, which affects the speed at which they learn their skills. And it also happens to affect experience gained. Once the kitten has enough experience points, you can spend gold and experience points to increase their rank. Now that I have 25 gold, I have the ability to promote the leader Maddie Smoke. It costs 500 experience points and 25 gold. The gold can be expensive at first, but the experience points are not used for anything else in the game, so... And all of a sudden, Maddie Smoke is rank 1, which you can see down here in the census list, rank 1. This means Maddie gets a 40% bonus to her job. This is what kitten ranks do. Higher ranked kittens, if they're the, the leader, but only if they're the leader, get a bonus to the job. One thing that I would like to mention, sometimes if you're looking at your resource production list, you will see that some of the production per second numbers are in a different color. That means that your leader is producing that resource, so you can see which resources are affected by your leader's rank bonus. Part 5. Policies, but only the ones that interact with the leader mechanic. This section contains spoilers for a few mid-game policies and the buildings that are affected by those policies. I'm going to mention them roughly in the order in which they would be unlocked during normal gameplay. I'm not going to give you advice about which policy to pick, I'm just going to explain how those policies interact with the leader mechanic. The first one I'd like to talk about is Autocracy. There isn't really a good way to explain it in just a couple of sentences, but I will try my best. The first part of the policy is to make the leader twice as good at their job. That's like, if they're a farmer, they'll produce twice as much catnip. If they're a woodcutter, they'll produce twice as much wood. Pretty straightforward. The second part of autocracy is leader increases conversion production based on uncapped housing buildings. So if I were to summarize what this does, it just means that smelters, calciners, and accelerators produce more stuff, and the size of the bonus is based on your leader's rank and how many different types of housing buildings in the bonfire tab are considered to be uncapped. If you want more information on autocracy, sorry, that's not the topic of this video. Moving on, Republic makes all other kittens better at their job based on the leader's rank. So normally only the leader has a bonus for having a high rank, but the policy Republic takes 1% of the leader's bonus and applies that to all kittens. Monarchy. This policy lies. Don't get fooled. It says that the leader's trait is twice as powerful, but that's not true. The bonus is only 95%, which is still a pretty big bonus, but it's 5% less than they claim it to be. Don't be fooled. And finally, Order of the Stars. You can only pick this policy if your leader is a priest, and once you have the policy, you can't assign a non-priest to be your leader. If you want to choose that policy, but your leader is not a priest, you're going to have to change leaders before researching the policy. Part 6. Strategies on how to pick a leader. There are two main strategies for picking a leader. One strategy is to micromanage. Since there is no downside to switching leaders as often as you want, you can just swap leaders constantly to benefit from each trait as much as possible whenever you want. If you're going to trade, use a merchant leader. If you're going to hunt, use a manager leader. If you're going to craft things, use an artisan chemist or metallurgist depending on what you're crafting, and if you're going to research an upgrade, use a scientist. A different strategy is to just pick a trait that you like, assign a leader who has that trait, and then ignore that the leader mechanic completely for the rest of the game. Because the trait effects are pretty small, you might decide that it's not worth it to optimize. That's your decision to make. If you have engineers, it's very highly recommended to make sure that the leader is an engineer. Because the leader gets a bonus to their job, and there's a limit to how many engineers you're allowed to have, and so when one of those engineers is as strong as two or three kittens, that's effectively like having extra engineers. Conclusion 
So that's my explanation of the leader mechanic and how it works and what things interact with it. If there's anything that you wish I'd mentioned in this video, discuss it in the comments section below. Please keep all discussion civil. And I would like to say thank you to a whole bunch of people. Thank you to Blood Riser because they made Kitten's Game and Kitten's Game is a lot of fun and so it's because of them that all of this was possible. Thank you to the folks in the Kitten's Game Discord server for helping explain the leader mechanic and strategies. Also, I want to say thank you to all of the people listed on screen right now for creating the art and the sound effects and music. Thank you for making assets that I used in this video. I would like to say thank you to God for giving me the gift of life. That actually turned out to be pretty useful throughout the process of making this video. Anyways, have a nice day. Bye-bye.